246. My guests are very excited to have you interacting with us on the toll free number. Um, they are willing to answer any questions that you might be having. Um, so call us on that number. Would really appreciate it. So let's open. Let's open it up with the basics. Um, a colleague of mine, Masoto Stone, earlier today was on the phone talking to one of our service providers, and I heard him saying something very interesting. And he says, you know, Ronaldi acronym is in Shimo government. And I thought that was very interesting. Here's one of them, LGBTI. Yeah. It sounds like one of those GTIs, if you want to, but this is different, <laughs> right? Tell us about it. What is LGBTI? What are we talking about that? What exactly are we talking about? Yeah. First, we, you know, thank you so much for the question because it's very necessary that we to start there. and we mm. educate um, the people and 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 lgbti first is to acknowledge that it is people right right <clears throat> it's not one person but it's an acronym that represent marginalized uh, uh, identities uh, and population and diverse population um, it's very interesting you say marginalized. Yeah, but it's 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 mm. also part of why we have to educate constantly. Right. Um, but L stands for lesbians, mm -hmm. uh, G for gay, mm -hmm. uh, B for bisexual, T for transgender, I for intersex. So it's a very long acronym, but it represents people, um, and 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 you know it's it's a community. Uh, who are diverse, it's sexual, uh, a diverse population, it's mm. gender diverse population, and, and, and it's really recognizing uh, uh, them as, as they own their own sexual orientation and gender identity and expression. Right. I think before we go on, what I would like to maybe request from the listeners, um, if you've got young ones listening to the radio at the moment, let me ask you perhaps, give them something to do in the other room because we might be focusing on issues that's got to adults only issues type of thing. So can I ask you to do that? Give them a bit of homework, even if it's not there, you know, create something and go, go have them do something, run around in the house. But, um, you know, uh, let's discuss these issues as adults and let's keep children away from this for now. Uh, there will come a time where we engage our kids when it comes to these type of things, but the young ones, uh, maybe they should move away from the radio. Jo, my wife is listening to me. She's doing exactly that's good. That's good. 0800 142 446. 0800 142 Can you go this marginalization? Yeah. It was the, the the first few words that you spoke about. It was marginalization. And now, Busi, I want you to come in there as well. Let's discuss this, all of us. Are you seeing it from this, from that perspective as well? You think there's a huge marginalization when it comes to um, the LGBTI persons? 100%. Mm. Yeah, there's great marginalization, uh, as most of, 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 of the sector or the community um, are being discriminated against. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a result of their sexual orientation, their gender, identity, and expression, you know? And to such an extent that some of, 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 the, of, of lesbian women, especially black lesbian, lesbian women, they get, uh, they get raped uh, as a result of that hate, you know, of saying you are different from me. Mm -hmm. And as a result... You want to behave in a, in a certain way, and I have the power to, wanna, to want to change you mm -hmm. and be who I want you to be. Mm -hmm. And that cannot happen yeah. in this new dis dispensation where yeah. everyone is equal, where everyone is protected by the Constitution, especially Section 9, mm -hmm. the anti-discrimination clause. Mm -hmm. Steve? Marginalization happens often to those who are identified. Um, and, you know, the, as a country, we have a history of prejudice. Mm -hmm. um, on, you know, we have a history of prejudice against a different color of the skin. Uh, we have a history of prejudice, um, you know, because people uh, of women, you know, where we see uh, we've had that history of sexism. Um, you know, so in and and we've also seen in the last 
25, 30 years. Um, you know, the very same marginalization happening to homosexuals um, and, and also to transgender community. And now recently what we're seeing, it's, it's not only recent, it has been happening, but quietly so. It's marginalization and discrimination to intersex persons. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm breaking it down so that it's understood that when we say LGBTI, there are multiple, multiple. Uh, uh, experiences mm -hmm. of discrimination, of stigmatization and marginalization that is happening. What do you think cause? Is it, is it education people don't know? Is it issues of acceptance? And I'm using acceptance really for lack of a better word in terms of... Uh, um, you know, when you're around um, uh, persons like that, are you embracing them? Why? Why is it like that? Why do we f we find a lot of marginalization and discrimination? I think first, um, one LGBTI persons, um, you know, are not asking to be accepted. Uh, who's accepting heterosexuals? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think f when we talk about embracing. Um, I think I embrace you as a heterosexual. I embrace any person that I come across. Why can't you embrace me as a lesbian woman? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so why can't we embrace each other as human beings? Right. Because I think the principle of humanity brings a complete context of, you know, uh, of respect, of love, of care, of non-judgmental, irregardless of any creed. Mm. Um, so, so what, why are we seeing this, um, you know, the domination of heterosexual and assumed domination uh, because it needs to be uh, understood Assume, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the context of how we have uh, uh, assumed that every person we come across is heterosexual. So we've normalized, uh, you know, the context of, uh, of heteronormativity. Mm -hmm. Right. We've normalized it in our homes, in schools, at church, you know, at workplace. That that's why marginalization happens because we we have not embraced diversities in our communities and church and so forth. So the whole context of assumed domination comes with a whole lot of power. Comes with a whole lot of uh, power that is expressed unto others. Power that is moving from thoughts, label to victimization, uh, and and to an extent of murder, and mm -hmm. that's why we're oh, yeah. seeing, and this mm -hmm. is why Bus is talking about why people are raped, are murdered, and by the Correct way, they are, they you know, it, yeah. exactly, and it's not just the typical rape and murder, you know, mm -hmm. of shooting, mm -hmm. you know, it's brutal. it's brutal. It's brutal. People are being strangled. People have got, you know, it's brutal incidents that we're seeing. So that whole marginalization starts with what we are taught and what we think. 0800-142-446. That's 0800-142-446. That number is a toll-free number if you're going to be calling from a landline. If you call from a cell phone, We'll write your details down. We'll call you back. We'll save you a bit of sense then so that you don't have to spend too much. I would like you to engage with us. It's a very, very important subject that we're talking about. Um, the Section 9 of the Constitution talks about, um, it, well, it touches on issues that's got to do with that, you know. And I would like us to explore this a little bit more. And I would like you to engage with us on that number, on the toll-free number, 0800-142-446. Somebody said to me, when are you going to start having a WhatsApp line? Don't worry, we're working on it. We we're working on it very very soon we'll be launching our whatsapp line and we're also going to be interacting with you on facebook twitter and the rest in the, in the near future uh, these are some of the things that are being discussed at the moment so hang 10 let's use that number 0800 142 sws environment you touched on it in a way and you're well you were away i mean that's why you spoke about it but but i'm saying you touched on it and i was going to come to it but you touched on it very quickly mm -hmm. i would like us to go back to it the swc environment that's the schools mm -hmm. the workplace and the churches mm -hmm. what can be done and and you know what i was going to ask you what the department is doing as as far as interventions is concerned sure. regarding this but let me hang 10 on that because mm -hmm. we know government is trying mm -hmm. something and mm -hmm. we'll explore that yeah. but let's talk about the sc uh, the swc environment the yeah. schools the workplace as well as the churches yeah i think let's start with uh, with the schools mm -hmm. um you know south africa is a signatory to you know the isa commitments the isa commitment is the eastern southern africa commitment on sexual reproductive 
health and rights mm-hmm. commitment. It's around comprehensive sexuality education. Now, by the way, you know, a lot of times people think when you say what is in the curriculum, people think teachers, LO teachers, life orientation teachers are teaching children how to, to have, have sex. sex yes. by the, no, it's about the body, the body changes, understanding mm. human sexuality, mm. understanding reproductive system. When you're saying you're a boy child, what kind of a reproductive system do you have, do you have? when you're mm. a girl child? And what happens should you engage in sexual uh, activities, contact yeah. or activities yeah. uh, how do you prevent what is HIV what is health what is right to take care of your body what is wellness so people think sexuality education is about oh are we going to promote homosexuality mm. are we going to teach children how to have sex and you know we, we lose it and we've seen it we've seen many of the uh, uh, part, other parties who are against comprehensive sexuality education it's not new is it not? No, it is not new. It has been implemented since the 90s. So since okay. life orientation was introduced in the school system, it had a component of comprehensive sexuality education. What has happened over the years is that teachers, because the school environment is controlled not only by a curriculum that is uh, delivered, it's also controlled by parents because they play a role in school LGBTs, governing bodies, yes, management, yeah. and yes. so forth. And by teachers are also parents. Oh, oh yeah, no. but, no. No, but of course. Oh, yes. <laughs> and we tend to forget exactly. that, right? Mm. <laughs> you know. But we're not gonna give you super beings. Yes, eh, as we no, mm. teachers are also parents. So sometimes when we do not bring out the right curriculum and build competency amongst teachers, they won't be able to deliver the right comprehensive sexual education. So that on its own is there, but it's not implemented accordingly. We want to see it happening in when teachers are being trained in universities mm-hmm. so that when they go into school, they know what to deliver on time. Secondly, we know what is happening. 78% of LGBTI persons are discriminated in schools. 78%? Yes. That's a huge number. That's a it? huge number, which means you're going to have high rate of dropout. So when you find a lesbian, gay, bisexual who have dropped out of school, we should not think, oh, no, the IQ is low. Uh Chances are that they've been discriminated. They've been abused. They've been bullied. They've been raped. They've been victimized. So we need to ask ourselves exactly how are we responding in the school environment. Mm. But also when we say education in the school system, are we also engaging parents? Mm. Broadly, let's talk about teenage pregnancy. How, how many parents want to talk about their teenagers being pregnant? Listen, I've got a 13-year-old. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. So it's a big issue. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is, yeah. 22 after 6 o'clock, Ausbusi, jump in there. Uh, we're still handling SWC environments. Yes. We touched on schools. Yeah. We can't go back to schools as mm. we go. I mean, uh, you know, the topic is so vast, really. The workplace, uh, um, how evident is that? How, how does it manifest in the workplace? Um, although I feel that that topic can be addressed by Steve <laughs> <How can I? laughs> yeah, in terms yeah. of, of the workplace. Right. Let me just start with, with right. the schools yeah. first. Okay. Uh, we have, you know, through the work that we do, through the National Trust Team, mm-hmm. have uh, received complaints where uh, learners f- uh, are discriminated against in schools, especially trans learners, mm-hmm. where a, a learner would go to school wearing pants mm-hmm. and the teacher will ask the learner to stand in front and humiliate mm-hmm. the child. Hang on. Take off really? your mm-hmm. pants, yes, take off your pants we want to see who, what, who exactly are you? Are you a girl or a boy? Yeah. Teachers are doing that. Yeah. They are doing that. So when you touch on the issue of teachers being parents, it's also about socialization. Yes. If I come from a community that is homophobic, that has hate or fear of LGBTI chances persons, are, chances are mm, when I get mm, mm, to school, I'm going to reflect that. that. Yeah. The yeah. same applies to Workplace, yes. where there is such managers, you will get the discrimination. And you also find that some of, of LGBTI persons, 
Steve has touched on it in the workplace. They get discriminated against. There was one example, I don't want to quote the person, who was invited for an interview, a lesbian woman. Mm -hmm. When she got there, the panel did not expect who they saw. They expected, you a know, you, a feminine mm. coming okay. in for an interview. Okay, all right. I, 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 yeah, okay. You understand? Yeah. So even some of the policies, I think that as, 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 as public servants, government departments, we have to mainstream issues of LGBTI yeah. persons. Policies that we have there have to include issues of LGBTI persons. Because not exactly. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Because not even, Steve, not everyone discloses, mm. you know, their gender identity mm. or mm. their exactly. sexual orientation. They don't. Yeah. So if the environment is not conducive enough, the it's work environment, be a challenge. exactly, how am I going to disclose? Right. Mm. 25 after 6 o'clock, 0800 142 Edward North, good evening. Capilla, what is it? Dumela, Dumela, how are you? I'm great, my brother. Are you okay? I'm okay. I'm the good Tetan and I'm trying. Tetan, I'm that. Okay. I am a Mm-hmm. I think we've lost Patko there for a bit. Uh, we'll try to get him back uh, with his last comment. Let's go to Richards Bay and we chat into Miss Mbata. From Richards Bay, Miss Mbata? Yes. Ndiapila. With Jenny? Ndiapila. North Coast coming to radio station with us this evening. Talk to us. I have two questions for you. Go for it. Okay, so the first one, uh, when one applies for a job, Normally, it is stated that people with disabilities can apply along with both genders. The LGBTI community is often excluded and not included mm. in such an application uh, mm -hmm. criteria. They are treated as insignificant. And as a result, uh, some may then hide their, their identity when they apply in fear of being judged or in the fear of being bullied at work since some individuals are extremely homophobic. So my question is, why are they excluded from the application criteria when we are talking about embrace, embracing each other as diverse human beings? Thank you so much for your call. I really appreciate it, Ms. Mbata from Reaches Bay. And we thank you, North Coast Community Radio Station, for taking part this evening. Here's Sis Dudu from Joburg. Sis Dudu? Hi. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? I'm well, thank you so much. What is your question or comment? Good. I want us to deal with the issue of um, this LGBT key in the context of Bible. What okay. actually the Bible says? Because for me, I want to ask my brothers and sisters today uh, about the procreation, about the divine law, which is the Bible, the creation of humanity. Okay. So, accordingly, in the Bible, the Bible is clear that it condemns homosexual practice. 
Okay. And according to God, it is an abomination before the Lord. And it is dealt with in the New Testament. It is dealt with in the uh, Old Testament. Okay. Yes. So now I want to know that uh, if uh, my brothers and sisters want this to be well known and be accepted, what about the intent and purpose of the Lord Almighty uh, uh, in regards to creation of humanity and the procreation? Thank you so much. This is Dudu. You're calling from Joburg. Really appreciate it. A number of community radio stations here in Gauteng, Joburg, Pretoria are taking part and we really appreciate that. 0800-142-446. Don't be left out of the conversation. We'd like to hear from you as well. Uh, please call in and let's discuss this issue. Um, let's let's open up. Let's talk about it, all right? Okay, here, here are your questions, um, my guests. Patco called in. It was not necessarily a question, but he wanted to add upon what you said. Yeah. And thank you so much, Patco, for your comments. Miss Mbata came in there. Uh, it's a problem, and we, we've just touched on, touched on it before she called. Yeah. But now um, she went into detail. She says, look, the issue with applications, she says, let's start there. Mm -hmm. As you apply, let alone coming for an interview, as you apply, there's a problem because there's exclusion there. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Should I? Okay. Um I think thanks for, for, for the callers, um, and it's much appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, and and Patko, who's known. But I, I'm hoping, Patko, one day you will address me as a she, as not your brother, but your sister. Forget the name, Steve, it's okay. But it's all right. Uh, I still it's love part of the you education ever. process, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I want to go to Mrs. Mbata's uh, question. It's very important. Mm. Yeah. Uh, section 9 of our constitution is very clear in terms of non-discrimination. Mm. Um, that nobody should be discriminated on the basis of disability, mm. of age, gender, sex, sexual orientation. Now, when you, uh, uh, as a government and as a country, when you recognize there's a po population that is left behind, that means you must be intentional. Now, in the past, when the yeah. whole application, and when you're saying people with disability are encouraged to apply, it was intentional that we need to diversify the environment and make sure that opportunities also are available for people with disability. Right? Right. Because they have competency, they've got capacity, they've gone to school. But we have not done so for other people. We have not done so. We have not encouraged that anyone, irregardless of your, you know, non-binaries, irregardless of your sexual orientation and gender identity, so that the whole diversity policy is encouraged for those who are left behind. So I think we, we have a very big task. Um, the other day I was speaking to the Department of Labor exactly around that. Mm. So we are looking into it and we are hoping we'll fast track it okay. so that adverts, when they go out, they respond to that. Now, if you go to uh, uh, Sis Dudu's point, I think Sis Dudu, you know, I, I'm hoping we will uh, have more conversation. Now, you've got an Old Testament, you've got a New Testament. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm a Christian myself mm. and I read the Bible. And I argue, even with my reverend mm. at Methodist, the Old Testament is there. The New Testament was also to correct some of the writings in the Old Testament. Now, there's no way in the Bible that says homosexuality is a sin. What is being referred to, and which is Le Leviticus, it's calling on the perverted acts, not only just the ones of same sex, mm. but beyond. It's perverted acts, uh, 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 acts. And it must be understood. And we are very quick as Christians to pick a scripture a that we can use. Mm. You know, it today we are talking uh, around homosexuality, but we are not talking about those who have sex when they are on menstruation mm. and, and many others. Mm -hmm. So today, the only thing that we're saying is abomination is the only one that we're talking about, not the rest, right? Right. Now, what I want her to reflect on, you know, religion is very broad. 
and there are people who are religious, there are others who are not. And I'm not saying we've got many LGBTI persons like myself who's spiritual and who is Christian. Okay? Mm -hmm. And what is important, there are principles of religion that whether you will read from Quran, from the Bible, and you are Buddhist and so forth. There are principles. There yeah. are principles yeah. that are shared across different religions. Yeah. One is God is love. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can never spread hate. So you must guard against your own word and mind and and thoughts. And and, yeah. So you can't. Yeah. Two, people are made in the image of God. So who are you to judge? Two. Yeah. And when you start pointing one finger at the one, the rest is pointing at you. So sis Dudu, I would love to have more conversation because there are many organizations like, uh, 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 you know, who speaks and unpacks what homosexuality is in the faith space. Wow, okay. So I, I really think she must Google. Google, there are many organizations, there are many reverends. I'm not a reverend, I'm just a disciplined Christian myself. So that's like one thing. Yeah. But for that moment, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it must be understood. I was looking for my Bible there for a bit. <laughs> it must be understood because yeah. the thing is that we interpret it in the way that suits us. Mm. That's how we harm others. Mm. And, and I think from, from my side, uh, I would like to say that um, I think it has become, is it a practice or a habit mm. that when one feels that the other is different from them and they don't like that difference, we will have something that we will use to justify yeah. that. That's how we promote hate. Yes. And it happens, previously, it happens in religion as well. Yeah. Yes, I mean, if you want to think about it, it happens in religion as well. If you don't, if you don't belong to a certain denomination, yes, yes, uh, yes. and then there's a problem. There's yes. a problem. Yeah, there's a and, problem. And, and I think last year Steve touched on it. If my memory serves you well, serves me, serves me well. Chief that May, jury, that was it. That oh. yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Your memory is awful. Oh, May that was. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> that during. The apartheid era, mm. the Bible used to be quoted mm. to, to oppress, oppress, to oppress the black people. Black people. Yes. So what are we doing now? We are using the very same Bible. We're using the very same methods. Are you Meth saying? the methods to oppress those which okay. we hate okay. or fear. Okay. Because we perceive them, perceive them, to be different mm. from us. You know, I've written, uh, I've written a number of things here Yeah. <clears throat> from us to do. Uh, we're going to jump into them. I want mm -hmm. us to dissect one or two. I don't want to dwell on it. I want to give other people a chance. Yeah. Let's take these callers quickly, and then we're going to sure. answer those questions. If we do have time, I've, I've, I've underlined the one that I would like us to to, to, to jump into. Let's take Simon from Bushback Rich. Brasai? Simon Bushback Rich? Simon going once? Simon a push? Going twice, fuck it, All right, we go, we go on. Here's Wanda from Emma Mbozan. I had to, I had to change gears there for so to you see. All right, let's go, Wanda. Yeah, I'm going to go on. I'm going to go on. I'm going to go on. I've got a straight technical, tricky question, Alpha. Go for it. It might sound stupid, but... No, no, no. How do you this, no? He's a straight guy, no? Attractive to lesbian, and then yet again, vice versa. Gay guys being attracted to me, is it something wrong with either party, or is it <laughs> wrong? Or don't laugh, my brother. Is that all? Yes, that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you for taking time to call us. You're calling from Emambozet. Emambozan. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Let's go to Fezzi from Richards Bay. I love Richards Bay. I gotta be honest. You know what? I, I have to I, I have to say this. I love Richards Bay, man. I went to Richards Bay last year. And Agiti man, it's Richards beautiful. Bay has got a thing, man. It's beautiful. It's, you know, mm -hmm. I went and walked there, go on to at the beach. Richards Bay has got beautiful. a thing, man. Wow. Then us couple of Richards Richards Bay too. All right. Let's talk to Fezile. Fezile from Richards Bay. Hello, hi. Hi, this is Fez. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. And you? I'm good, thanks. You gotta be I'm when you're from Richards Bay. Go for it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. But anyways, let me just uh, jump right to it. 
I have two questions, actually. Uh-huh. Um, my first question is, um, in the LGBTI community, we are seeing less uh, in, in leadership positions. Now, how can a corporate or any kind of business enterprise better address the marginalization of the LGBT community in a working environment? Good stuff. Is that the only one that you have, the only question you have? No, I actually have another question. Go for it. So now, let's <coughs> say um, you say more. And then I want to use the public toilet. So, Mount Yakon and then assign a gay. Again, I'm in a situation like that. So, I scream because at the end of the day, he's still a guy. As much as we tell you, we'll see in the constitution law, but he's still a guy. What am I supposed to do in a situation like that? Okay, all right. All right, what is your question? Okay, I'm going to answer your question. Okay, thank you so much for your call, Mfazile. Um, really appreciate it. From Richards Bay, let's go to Morgan from JHB. Johannesburg, City of Gold, Morgan? Yes. Speak to me, Bob. <coughs> yes. Yeah, sure. No, I guess I need to... It wouldn't it? I think... We... Morgan, are you still there? Morgan? Oh, no, no, no. Alright, Morgan is no longer there. Alright. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's move on. Alright, let's jump into these questions. Yeah. We'll go to Dudu. When we have time, right? Yeah. It was just something interesting that I've noted. We have Wanda. Zet, we had a caller from there. We, we Wanda. Yeah, it was Wanda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, <laughs> Wanda, thanks for, for that question. It's quite an interesting uh, uh, question. Uh, Wanda said, what happens as a straight guy who's attracted to a lesbian woman or, you know, when you have gay guys attracted to him as a straight person? I want to... Maybe clean, maybe two things. Mm -hmm. uh, first, um, sexual orientation is not written on the forehead. Kind of, I'm sitting next to you. Mm -hmm. So besides knowing the fact that you've got a wife and a beautiful daughter, mm -hmm. right? But your sexual orientation is not written on your forehead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Wanda must know that when we walk around, we're walking around as human beings, as human beings. Mm -hmm. right? The only thing is that we will start assuming so sexual orientation will be confirmed by a person when once you engage absolutely yes. so when yes. uh, uh, you're attracted to a lesbian woman and they tell you unfortunately baba i'm lesbian that's where you retract and say i go right so but why do we have to unfortunately though look i mean the, the point here is that they will turn you not down if they're not they're they are not attracted to, to you, you mm -hmm. right because mm -hmm. sexuality is diverse mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you might find that you know you have other lesbian who would engage and you know but you would have others who would tell you Kisha. Kisha. Uh, mm -hmm. and similarly when a gay person is attracted to you Wanda, and they say, Oh, Wanda, I'll say, mm. Sana, right? Because what are they attracted to? They're attracted to a man, mm. that's what they see. Mm. They are not thinking Wanda is straight, Wanda is gay, bisexual, or any other thing. They are attracted to a man. First and, and foremost, they are attracted to a human being. They are attracted yeah. to a Second human being. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, it's, so it's, it's very important. Now, Wanda used the term straight. I never used that in my vocab, and it's okay. It's a, it's a township lingo that we grew up with. Can I ask you why? Do you want to engage <laughs> me on why, or we'll talk about it well, you can ask me why. Okay. So if Karabo, you're going to walk around and you're saying, Gutiaz and Stephen, I'm straight. Uh, it's okay. You can own it. But that word I never use in my vocab because you mean any, you, anyone that's else not is not straight. Yeah. You, should, you, you should check. Yes. You should check it out on the video. How what he does. You should check it out on the video. Oh, right? my word. <laughs> so the only straight thing we know is a ruler or okay. spaghetti. Until next year, eat. Even the spaghetti is not straight <laughs> when cooked. <laughs> exactly, that's the thing. All right, I tell you what, you, you know what? We do have a couple of questions, right? Okay. I've got this caller, though, yeah. um, listening to Impact all the way from the United States of America. And uh, who am I talking to? We've got a listener from the U.S. Is it Matthew? Matthew? Yes, how's it going? It's going very well, Matthew. How are you doing? I'm doing very good. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you for calling all the way in the U.S. I think you, you guys are um, a couple of hours behind us, right? Uh, yeah, in fact, I live it's we're one eight PM. hours behind your time. Oh, but I'm actually, I'm currently, I'm currently in Nongoma right now. Right. 
That's how I heard the program was listening to Nongoma FM 88.3. Well, perfect stuff. Welcome to South Africa. Ah, thank you very much. It's been a wonderful time here. Great. I would just like to say I'm, I'm very glad to hear uh, hear you guys discussing this topic on the radio. Um, back back home where I'm from, uh, there's been a movement to try to really accept the, the LGBTQ community, and uh, I'd just like to say that I think it's very good you're trying to educate um, South Africa on this issue, and uh, I would like to see more people be accepting uh, towards lesbians, gays, uh, transgenders, and all sorts of things like that. Right. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Have you, have you got a question for us there, Matthew? <clears throat> uh, my question, I guess, would be uh, what other ways is, is the government going about trying to help educate people on this issue? Okay. Perfect stuff. All right. Thank you so much. Is that the only question that you have? Um, I guess other than that, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's about the only question I have. Um, and then, yeah, I'd just say, I'd like to say thanks for having me. All right, great. So how, how long have you been in the country? I have been in the country, uh, I got here October 18th, and I will fly out November 10th. Do me a favor. Before you leave, you gotta go to Durban, man. There's King Chaka Marine there. If you happen, oh, yeah, I've, I've been to Durban before. I was here. Uh, I was in Durban two years ago when I was here. In fact, pop into uh, yeah. When I was here with KBMF 102.5, our our radio station from Montana, uh, we went to Durban, and then this time uh, we hiked to Gala Falls, and then we hiked Eminwini Pass and the Rockeries. Mm. And uh, yeah, we've been all over the place. Uh, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you so much for participating in our local programs and listening to our local radio stations. We really appreciate hey. it, Matthew. All right. Yeah, thank you very much. Big shout out to Nongoma FM. Good stuff. There we go, Matthew, uh, coming into the country at a very, very good time. Uh, mm. The box are playing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, 14 before 7. All right, let's jump in. I wanted to take that caller quickly. We don't want to keep them holding on for a bit too long. Let's go on with those questions. All right, you were explaining that whole issue, and, and you were just about to to <laughs> to hold my hand and squeeze a little bit and make me understand how passionate you are about not using the word straight. Go for it. You know what? You see, he does it again. <laughs> <laughs> she does it again. No, it's okay. I love my straight friends. You know, ah! just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's like that. <laughs> Is it like that? I do okay. love my friends. Okay. Look, uh, okay. You, know, you know why I'm saying talk, this? Yeah. I'm yeah, saying yeah, this because <laughs> people don't know the term heterosexual. And that's why I'm understanding. Uh, but straight, it's a derogative word. It's a township. Okay. It's a township word. It's like saying to a black person, kafir. Yeah. You know, nigger. Yeah. You know. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I didn't know. Yeah. I'm gonna be totally honest yes. with you. I did not know. You know, but when you when you when you put in human sexuality, you know, knowledge and the real terms that is used to define human beings, you have to use the right terms. So in biology, you do not have straight. In biology, you've got hetero, and which means opposite. Okay. In, 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 that's mathematics. So hetero means uh, uh, opposite. Homo means same. Bi means both. These are terms that were used and taught in school. Right. And then there goes, you know, heteros who do not own up to their identity and they lose it and they say they call straight. themselves straight. My dear. And then when human sexuality is diverse and flexible and complex and complicated and you find somebody that you're attracted to and then you question whether you're straight still. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. So for me some of these vocabs I don't use. Same Makes as the sense, word yeah. normal. When yeah, people like say, what, okay, that one here. Mm, like right? what? Okay, who's abnormal then? You exactly. Know? Who's abnormal? Yeah, but mm. when you say straight and a woman, oh yeah, who's who's? who's, 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 who's <laughs> you, you see, now that you've told me that, I was going to say, come on, woman, come on. Yeah, I'm trying to kind of say that. Yeah, no true. And and Steve, <laughs> also true, some people don't understand what mm. the meaning of sexual orientation yes. is. Uh, just there. Yeah. Whoa, both are debris. Let's discuss that. Papa, I hear it. You've picked up a lot of people. I mm. understand. Let's yes. just not, let's not yes. leave it, yes. right? Mm. Quickly, in thirty seconds, if, if that's enough, a minute. What is it? What is sexual 
orientation. What is it? Sexual orientation is who Busi mm-hmm. is attracted to. Yeah. Finish and clap. Yeah. So, so, then do you pay 30, 30 seconds? No. Why they on the 10? Yeah. Okay. And it's so, Boosie so, saying that. that. It's Boosie saying that. I am attracted that to. That's my sexual So that means Karabo can't say Boosie is attracted to somebody else. Okay. Oh. Yes. Because it only. It's got to come from the. Yes. Can I say the owner? Am I using Absolutely. the Absolutely. Right the person must confirm. That's how we understand. So because it's about their own attraction, their own feeling towards the next person. Is the next person allowed to ask you what is your sexual orientation? You can. Am I, am I, am I, am I talking can. sense? Am I yeah, talking yeah, sense? Yeah, talking yeah. sense. You okay. Can. Hmm. You can. And also, how and do then, you identify yourself? You see, the yourself? good thing about, about what you're saying is the next person able to ask you mm. when you ask and then we see confirms mm. uh, then we've got communication then we've yes. got communication <laughs> we've got dialogue. and mutual <laughs> respect <laughs> thank you you can 10 minutes before 7 0800 442 uh we're chatting to my two friends coming into the studio uh this time around we're talking about issues that's got to do with the lgbti persons and the rights um of, thereof and we're exploring that we want you to be part of this uh, broadcast by the way Ge- all right we're gonna go to first in just now yeah <laughs> i told you you must take over the two all right so sisbus is in the studio as well as uh, steve is in the studio we're discussing uh, these things 0800 142 that's 0800 142 here's a big problem mm. fezile picks up the call he says you know what can talk about about something that they they're not they're not they're not ready they're not ready we're always ready Le- are you oh yeah okay let me let me check let me check there she says leadership position mm-hmm. we got a big problem there yes very little if there's any representation so fezile asked two things Mm-hmm. When you have people on leadership positions and you are a business, what is it that you can do for the LGBTI community? How do you address it in the workspace? Because at the beginning, you ask the question, we see what is happening in the workplace. Mm-hmm. And we we're talking about discrimination. Mm-hmm. Now, Fezile is asking about a solution. Mm-hmm. And maybe we can tap on that. Mm-hmm. First, I think it's very important to look at diversity policy. Once any business, mm. any office, any organization has got a diversity policy, you would have nailed it. Because that means anyone that walks in there would know the rules of engagement in this company is to respect anyone regardless of sexual orientation, gender, race, disability, and so forth. When you walk in, you will be able to embrace every person the space is diverse. It's love. It's productive. That's mm. how you keep the economy going. Mm. Because everyone's well-being is taken care of. Now, so in, the absence, yeah, in, yeah. in the absence of, of that, of that yeah. you have to introduce it. You have to get the workers, which is your workforce, to talk about it. That's how you have to assess even the mindset if workers or you know employees are not aware of the issues or some are homophobic and so forth you have to assess so that when you introduce it you would do it in phases where you bring others to change their attitude towards others you have to care about everyone's well-being no matter the dominance or no matter the minority right and then and then the yeah. issue of mainstreaming yes gender mainstreaming yeah right and then Fazila goes on to ask um, are they, when I want to use a public toilet and I find... Sure. Y- yeah, yeah. Any comments on that? Sister? Yeah. I, it has, it, I think it has been happening a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, when you mainstream, we talk about mainstreaming, mm. whether in the public sector or private sector. Okay. When you come to issues of, 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 of toilets, one is encouraged to also have a gender-neutral toilet. A gender-neutral toilet meaning that any person comfortable to use it yeah will use it uh, do we no have, female do we do? Yeah. and male when you mainstream we have to, you have to. take into consideration the gender neutral one do same we have, with do our have, forms yeah. mm. same same with our forms now we have to consider the third gender mm. you have female you have male mm-hmm. there should be another one whether you call it an x 
or you call it you must be creative when you want to mainstream. I can get issues double sabo me women. We said we are mainstreaming gender issues, yeah. women's issues. Yeah. The same should happen with 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 sexual with, orientation, with sexual and, orientation. and with the special advice working together with the sector. Because the sector are the ones that know more than most, if not some of us. All right. I think you touched a bit on Matthew's uh, question there about government's intervention. Mm. Uh, we're going to jump into it uh, when, we, when we wrap up in detail, though. Okay. So, Matthew, hang in there. Don't go away. We've got Sharp from Nongoma. Uh, Sharp from Nongoma, how's it? Hello, how are you doing? I'm Sharp, Good man, and you? <laughs> I'm okay, thank you. Mm. Go for it. Yes, uh, I just wanted to say I'm enjoying your show very much. And at Nongoma FM and KBMF in USA, Butte, Montana, we're actually doing a collaboration where we had uh, guest shows where we had uh, two trans transgender people coming mm. to the show and talking about the challenges that they have. Oh, wow. Well done. So, well done. Well done. Well done. Yes. So on that show, I heard you guys were talking about the bathroom challenge, about mm. the identity challenge. And when I talked to them, the challenge that they had was that they actually fear people more than mm. people fear them. When they walk into a bathroom, they fear that they might be raped, they might be attacked, attacked. Mm. they might be uh, uh, subjected to some sort of violence. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. true. Right. And while I was there, the, the people there, the, they're a very accepting community. Mm -hmm. But then it's not everywhere. And when they asked me about it, about the difference between there and in South Africa, I told them that there are some traditional uh, obstacles that we have to go through when we're in South Africa because here we have traditional values that we have in different communities. I see. And my, I see. my question is that how do we educate people in traditional places, in rural places, how do you educate them but not disrespecting their traditional values, like places like in Nongoma. Okay, all right. Thank you so yeah. much, Sharp, for that. Um, it's a very interesting one, and we're going to explore it. You know, I was talking about earlier, um, I've actually written it down, we are talking about the SWC um, environment. I think we're going we're gonna to have to add traditional leadership there in terms of engagement with them. And, and how it goes. But thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. Let's go to Kukulet. I know it's Kukulet actually from Lady Smith. <laughs> Sorry, Kuku, man. I got carried away, man. Hey, there's that song, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kuku? Hello. How are you? I'm good, in you? I'm good. Thank you so much for calling in. What is your question or comment? Hello. Kuku? Yes. I'm calling from Lady Smith. I was listening to your show on mobile, and, and um, it's a very interesting topic that you're discussing because it's the story of my life in a way, you know. Like um, the other day, I'm 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 female by birth, so the other day I go into the ladies' room and people get hysterical, and they call security, mm. and you just don't know where you fit in, where to get in, like where you fit in, in the whole picture, you know. It's uh, I think it's a good thing you guys are engaging in this topic so that you know people can get more educated on this because. Yeah, it's really tiring. So much, you know, I just use the gentleman's room because I know. Go to the ladies' room, I'm going to have problems all the time. Is, is there a problem for you, Google, if you don't mind me asking? Because now it, um, uh, the first thing that hit my mind as you were talking is compromise. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, now it's like you're forced to do something that you originally don't want to do. Mm. Um, I, I, does that make you happy that you're compromising in that way? Or do you want to live your life the way it's supposed to be lived? If you want to go to a women's ladies' room, yeah. that's exactly what you want to do. I'm, I'm thinking this is South Africa. People are supposed to do things they want to do. But, you know, I really can't. Because yeah. of drama before I do that. So I just choose not to do it. Not because I'm happy about it, but, I mean, it's the easier thing to do. Let me let me have you engage with my with my guests quickly, uh, uh, Kuku, just for a bit. Uh, would you like to speak to to yeah. Kuku? Yeah, go for it. Uh, you see, uh, Kuku, I think you and I would uh, uh, possibly experience because, you know, as as a lesbian woman myself, and I'm butch, so a lot of time people would um, would definitely assume uh, 
you know, I, my name is Steve, and then people would assume, uh, oh, Steve is a man, right? Mm. But Steve is yeah. not a man, it's a woman, right? And I, 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 I own my identity like that, but I'm non-binary. That means, you know, uh, I'm not cisgendered, so I'm not a feminine woman mm. as expected yeah. uh, uh, by yeah. society. So you relate uh, to So I, I assume, as you said to you, by the way, you're female, I assume we share this experience, right? Yes, it, 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 exactly. It, 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 so so right. one thing I've learned, over the years because I had that uh, many years ago but one thing I've learned I've learned to look out for me because similarly you mm. would be worried when you walk into a male bathroom mm. oh. and you start to fear and that's why you are sharing that right I had to mm. own up and accept I'm not interested when women shout I'm that's not it's their own problem I am not lost so when you walk into a female bathroom you yeah. must walk in proudly without yeah. fearing let them deal with their own demons of questioning yeah. you cannot now question and put your life at risk for yeah. any to accommodate other, to hence, accommodate hence I was asking yeah. the compromise mm. you know, it's like yeah. one mm. is doing yeah, yeah. Asbusi? yeah she's compromising yeah. Uh, her safety to, to, to make other people comfortable yeah, yeah. and that is yeah. so unfortunate be comfortable go to the bathroom and do what you have to do there and get out all right yeah. all right yeah. Google are you happy with that very happy thanks a million guys. Google it too uh, I had to say it. I had to say it before you leave thank you so much for calling all right let's go to Bashimani from uh, Bashimani from Northwest uh, Bashimani boys from Northwest Bashimani Northwest going once yeah, I'm, I'm calling from Brazil. You don't know how much I look forward to fuck up people at Bode. Okay, go for it, Bashimani. Thanks, Kara. Look, I, I don't want to sound controversial. I No, no, we're discussing. We discuss you know what? It, there's no there's no judgment. Yeah. Uh, we're yes. not judging, we're discussing. Yeah, go for it. No, no, no. I just I wanted to mention that and I also want to mention that I do actually have friends who are uh, 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 gays and lesbians, so I, the question that I have uh, is uh, uh, to, to them actually to, to say to make it easy for us. How do I identify them? How do I know if they are in a relationship? How do I know who is he and who is he? <laughs> oh, but she man, over to what busy man. Anyway, that's my first question. Well, without having to ask, without having to investigate for a who is he, who is she, because mm. obviously they will look familiar or, or rather similar. The, 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 the other question would be on the issue of um, adoption, because obviously they, 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 they can't have children of their own. What is the law saying on that, and how do they feel about that? Because obviously they, are, they they've decided that they don't have, want to have children of their own, <laughs> but they want to raise children. So, uh, uh, what is your uh, position on that? And if you right. do ab uh, adopt children, okay. what are they going to teach them? All right, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, Mashimani, uh, for, for your call. I think we're running out of time. We've only got three minutes. I'm going to take okay, this last right, caller. Cool. Or am I taking both of them, two of them? All right, let me take two, but we're going to run out of time. Here's Mfundo, and I hope it's not. <laughs> Here's Mfundo from Cape Town. Mfundo? Mfundo from Cape Town. Yes, my big brother. I man, that's <laughs> like it, man. I thought it was you. Jeez, yeah. man. Yeah, it's about time you call into these shows, Mfundo. How are you doing? I'm good, my brother, man. Thank you so much, and uh, to your to your guests as well. I'm listening. I'm listening to Radio of the Mail, eh? Yes, sir. And, yeah, and then my mine is not. It's not a question, it's per se. Yes, sir. Uh, but but it's a comment because. It's a very interesting topic. Yeah. Um, because, because, you know, when I'm listening to this conversation and the, and the other listeners as well, I begin to understand that it's one, of the, it's one of the subjects that we will never, ever have a common understanding. Right. In, in terms of having one voice. Okay. Now, now, now I begin to understand as well, or, or to think of, the, of the fact that it means life, life has two layers: the, 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 the originality, and then also there is a robotic side of life. There's a what? That's, that's robotic. A robotic side. Okay. <laughs> that, that's why you have. That's why you have those 
who are asking based on the Bible. Okay, okay, oh, I see and what then, you mean. And then, and, okay. and then now, even, even, even from the Bible, we... The only reason okay, Mfundo, Mfundo, you're a radio producer. You should know we're running out of time. Go for it. Go go, go to your point, my brother. No, 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 it's fine. My, big bra, my, my only comment is that I think we need to do more education mm. in terms of taking the okay. community to understand. All right. Thank you so much, sir. That's that's Mfundo. Um, is one of our colleagues, by the way. That's why I threw my hands in the air when I saw Mfundo Cape Town. I thought there could only be one guy. Yeah. Mfundo is one of our producers based in Parliament. So when we have pro uh, programs happening in Parliament, he's the guy that's handling our studios ah, back in Parliament. So yeah, thank you for your yeah. call, Mfundo. Let's go to SK. SK is calling from KZN. SK. Hello, guys. Are you well? We right, good. We good. We good. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. I just a comment. Go for it. Yeah, I just want to say to people that are homophobic, they, they, they're not going on a good time. They're going through a lot of really violence against uh, women and children, abuse, they unemployment. I mean, we are graduates, but they're unemployed. Can we make the world a better place? And stop worrying with you. Because these people are not bothering anyone. At the end of the day, if they were to choose, I'm not I'm sure they're not gonna choose that, but it happened with Bafila, the way Bafila and Korabantuban. <laughs> so can can we agree with Ubashiman you were responding to Bashiman the investigator <laughs> We can give you his number I can give you his Facebook account No no I'm just joking Thank you so much SK for calling in we really appreciate it uh, we've only got 2 minutes uh, we're actually out of time yeah. but let's take 2 minutes to wrap up uh, it's a pity I'm not, I'm not going to go to these questions, yeah, all of them, but yeah, yeah. let's just wrap it up. Uh, a couple of things came 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 through. Government's intervention, what's government doing about it? You know, we had guys like Sharp who call in uh, education to people, especially sure. those in the rural areas. His concern is more about traditional teachings that we have, where we come from, culture and so forth. He spoke about that. But Shimani yeah. came in there, stirred things a little bit there, and we're suspecting that uh, SK might be responding to that. You know, um, making it easy for people to identify, he says. Yeah. You know, spoke about issues of adoption. Mfundo came in there, spoke about originality and robotism, if I can call it that. Some people are so robotic, focusing on one thing and not really opening up their minds, I suppose. And then, of course, SK came in there, the last one, saying, look, there's a lot going on in Ghana, Piwe. Now, mm. how do you wrap it up? Mm. I think let's wrap it up uh, in this way. Uh, LGBT persons are human beings. Um, and once you understand human sexuality, that when a child is born, they're born male, female, or intersex. And, you, you know, that's biology. It's mm. important. And when you also look at gender, how do we bring up this child who was born and assigned a particular sex uh, at birth? And then we look at gender because gender is social construction. Uh, and, and gender, then we bring them up as girls, as boys. And then you now going outside the binary context, that's where you then find transgender persons, gender non-confirming individual. How do you assign masculinity, femininity? Because we, we give roles. By the time you say, I've got a girl child and I'm buying them a doll, you are assigning them roles when they grow up mm. that they're going to mm. take care of a baby. Mm. When the child is born and you're saying they are boys, and then you assigning them and you give them a gun and you say shoot because you have to protect or you have mm. to defend or mm. whatever, right? Mm. So that's a, 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 a gender on its own. Sexual orientation, which is what Busi has spoken about. But all of these things are interconnected. Now, they are human beings. That child that was born has got a reproductive system. Who says gay people can't give birth? Mm. Who, can't, who can't have children? They've mm. got a reproductive system. Who says lesbian women can't give birth? I've got a child of my own. I gave birth. And, you know, as a lesbian woman, nobody just decides and wake up and say they want to adopt. They will decide and wake up. Whether they are heterosexual, they are homosexuals, they are bisexual, they will then decide they would want to adopt. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. The other thing, 
Bashimane must stop investigation because nobody's worrying about him mm. being heterosexual or which, or whichever homophobic. sexual or whatever. I think people, if you're saying you've got gay friends, bisexual friends, uh, 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 lesbian friends, let them be. It doesn't matter whether they are dating or not. Sometimes people just don't want to date. Can we mm. relax and, and not be investigating <laughs> officers? <laughs> Why are you not going to be in All right. So you say, yeah, I, 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 I think from my side is that um, government together with the civil society organization yeah have uh, made strides we do, like. in terms of intervening and addressing those challenges. Mm. Uh, we have established the National Task Team, mm. uh, which is chaired by now recently our Deputy Minister and Steve, of course, as a member of the CSO. Mm -hmm. And we have developed a national intervention strategy that focuses on five areas. That is prevention, education, education, education. Mm -hmm. Then it's response in terms of the cases that are pending and then capacity building of public officials, especially on service points, right. to prevent the challenge of secondary victimizations that is uh, uh, experienced by the victims. And then we have these structures that we have established. We have the provincial task teams that are implementing the national intervention strategy, right. and we have rapid response teams. And then lastly, we have our entity that we go to and report yeah. on what we have done in terms of the international intervention strategy. But what I want to say, there are many organizations as well in addition to what Pussy is saying, like Access Chapter 2, oh, yes. Our Triangle. I mean, if people want more information, they can go on Facebook, they can go on websites. Mm -hmm. Access Chapter 2 is there and it's contactable also by phone. Um, so people can go on social media and find us uh, to be in contact. Thank you so much. That's the voice of uh, Steve Litzinger, Director of Access Chapter 2, and as well as uh, Busisi Wetlamini, DOJ and CED Project Manager, handling issues of G LGBTI, the programs that are running from there. We really appreciate it. Thank you so for your time, Busisi. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time, Steve. Thank you, my friend. I want what No, what for? I can't go with that question that's difficult. Oh, God. Give me out. Mark, you always will be out. Yeah, give me out. Let's apologize to Nontanta from KZN. We really appreciate it, Nontanta, for calling in. Unfortunately, you could not go on air, but don't worry about it. We've got your numbers down, and we'll definitely call you next time and engage you. And Cabello uh, from Ziras. By the way, mm -hmm. Wow. All right, so Cabello, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. From Cape Town, Unati called in as well. Unati, we really, really appreciate it. And I think somebody that's made my day for calling in Kim Fundo. Thank you so much. Um, here's Lennox Class holding the fort with regards to telecommunications. So this evening, we really handle, uh, appreciate that. Black belt in picking up phones, he says. And then we've got uh, the Demosoto Stone handling controls as well as a signal distribution. Alright, and thank you so much to us no boo uh, on uh, video them handling all our video and YouTube uh, accounts in terms of uh, images. We really appreciate it, says Nobu. You did an absolutely amazing job. And Lili Bosso Darnazepe, it's our DOJ and C D, the guys that are making this uh, show possible, putting up together the content, making sure that you are dear uh, to to what we're here for. We thank you so much, guys. Really, really appreciate that. Stukulwana saba pedil matebele siya atajwa lagir. Magobare mechukundu. Ciao for now. Well done, guys.